Let's bring in Greg Friedman joining us from Peachtree Group, private equity real estate investment firm. He's managing principal and CEO. Greg, thanks for being here on the Schwab Network this afternoon. Yeah, thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. You guys have a very interesting perspective. Uh, the markets seem to be in a general happy place when it comes to equities. What do you see from your lens, uh, both from the private side and real estate, of course, too, where there's been some doubts over the last year? Yeah, so real estate's you know going through a chaotic moment right now, just dealing with higher interest rates. You know, I think everyone's come to the realization going back to the beginning of this year that rates are truly going to be higher for longer, and that has a huge impact to the underlying values of you know commercial real estate assets. Because you know rates, you look at the ten-year Treasury rate today, it's double what it was you know pre twenty twenty two for that decade, you know pre twenty twenty two, and it's that's going to have a huge impact to the underlying values of commercial real estate assets. Not to mention, you have you know just this huge amount of debt, you know this wall of debt maturities that's occurring over the next several years. You know, over the next twelve months, you've got about a trillion dollars of commercial real estate loans maturing, and that's putting a lot of pressure on you know different you know ownership groups, sponsors of commercial real estate assets. This has uh, been kind of the uh, lingering cloud on the horizon, but it seems like if you look at stocks, they've like moved past it. But of course, in private markets, things move a, a little bit more in a clunky way uh, with uh, liquidity. So where is that kind of like timeline where we should know, all right, are things blowing up or are they making it through? Like what's kind of the next uh, benchmark on the calendar? Yeah, so I think I think at this point, I mean, I think there's a lot of different you know benchmarks you could potentially look at. I mean, I think the reality is is we've got to get through this wall of debt maturities. You know, in the private market side, you know, the public market's probably a little bit better position. You know, most of the you know the REITs on the public side probably have a they're in a better position to handle the wall of debt maturities because they just have less debt in general. Most you know private owners of commercial real estate carry you know higher leverage points. And that's going to be the, you know, as the debt is maturing, that's going to really be the, the big event that's going to cause, you know, more pressure on underlying values of assets today. And so I think that's that's where people should really pay attention to, um, not to mention just seeing where rates settle over the next, you know, over the next 12 to 18 months. Because if the 10-year Treasury stays above 4%, that's going to, you know, really impact the underlying cap rates, how these assets are valued long term, and potentially you could see some cap rate, you know, expansion versus, you know, compression that some people are expecting over the next couple of years. So the rates come down that many are expecting, but again, like U.S. stocks have basically kind of found this place where they're like, all right, we aren't going to cup or else we're not going to hike. But it seems like a different story when it comes to real estate, when it comes to private markets, too. Did they need relief? Like, did they need cuts, Greg, for the math to add up? Yeah, I mean, you, you definitely need, you know, you, you need the math. To, in order for the math to add up, you do need interest rate cuts for the private side, you know, as well as even the public side. You know, both sides would benefit greatly with interest rate cuts because, you know, right now you've got, you know, the, the loans that are maturing. These were loans that were originated for the most part in a much lower interest rate environment. And now the, the debt cost is two to three X. And that's, you know, impacting values. That's impacting the ability to be able to pay debt service. And that's, you know, that's causing the stress on the underlying assets. How much of this comes from office real estate that is struggling? Uh, are there other uh, kind of low hanging fruits that you see it being as being at risk? Yeah, so office is a big part of the story, but office is more, you know, secular distress. So it's not, I wouldn't say it's the stress, you know, although it's experiencing this balance sheet stress that we're talking about. Uh, but I would say office is a part of the story, and it's a big piece of the you know the loans that are maturing. But by far, you know, multifamily, industrial, a lot of these other property types are experiencing you know the same challenges. Hotels as well on the balance sheet stress side. So you know, it's pretty much across the industry. Multifamily has a large portion of the the loans that are maturing because it is a big part of the commercial real estate you know ecosystem. It's been one of the most investable property types over the last you know decade. And so it's, you know, it's going through, you know, probably even more stress as it relates to the assets that have loans maturing in this environment that were originated over the last, you know, go back, you know, to, you know, 2020, 2021, 2022, you know, over 20% of the multifamily product traded and all that was, you know, trading in a lot of cases into these floating rate facilities that are dealing with, you know, caps that are expiring and they're having to, you know, resize and, you know, reprice with higher interest rates today.
Mm. And uh, will these uh, uh, companies, will these institutions have any outlet uh, if rates don't come down? Can there be combinations? Can there be M&A? Or is there a case to be made that these are the weakest businesses that uh, shouldn't have made it this far to begin with? Like, I think about, like, some of what happened in the regional bank stuff, like hindsight 2020, but it did kind of look afterwards. A lot of these were subjected to kind of higher risk clientele, speculative assets, and then they didn't really have much else in their business model. They get acquired by a big bank. Suddenly it looks like it kind of makes sense. Are there other outlets like that for any of these industries? I think, you know, candidly, the loans that are maturing today, just given it's going to be at much higher rates, that's going to force a lot of, you know, transaction volume. You know, for us as an organization, we invest up and down the capital stacks. We invest on the credit side as well as the equity side. We see, you know, right now we see a huge amount of opportunity on the credit side to help groups recapitalize under this, you know, scenario of higher rates for longer. And I think as, you know, different real estate owners, you know, regional owners, operators, developers of commercial real estate, you know, as, as it's taking place, they're going to have to either recap through the debt markets or potentially they're going to be forced to sell. And the transaction market is down to, you know, you have to go back to the great financial crisis. So you have to go back over 13 years. And that's where we are on the transaction volume side because transactions, you know, assets are just not trading today because, you know, there's still a pricing discovery. There's still a huge disconnect in pricing. But I think this wall of debt maturities is going to be the catalyst to you know, force a lot of consolidation amongst ownership groups, but also you know, create you know, a more fluid transaction market because groups are going to be forced to either sell assets to shore up liquidity or they're going to be um, forced to recapitalize through the debt markets. Do you see those uh, as buying opportunities or entry points for maybe the combined businesses or the businesses that exist? Or do you see this as kind of being like a, uh, uh, the first flick of a, a ticking time bomb that's going to have bigger repercussions? Yeah, I think this is a huge buying opportunity that's going to take place towards the end of this year, going into the first half of 2025. Okay. So I think we're in front of a huge buying opportunity that should be you know, taking place later, you know, starting in the third and fourth quarter of this year. So it sounds like some of these uh, kind of tripwires you expect to go off this year. That's right. I think we're going to start seeing it. If we don't real, cut. I mean, we're seeing it right now. Yeah, we're seeing it in real time right now. As loans are maturing, we're seeing, you know, the actual opportunity set to go in and buy assets more opportunistically, as well as just the need, you know, for additional capital. Because as you mentioned, you know, regional banks, community banks make up 40% of the, you know, commercial real estate credit markets, and they're just not lending at the same level today. Well, uh, real quick, Greg, will any of this find its way into denting the uh, so far kind of impenetrable markets for real estate? I think like Miami, New York, the places that uh, were able to survive or come back pretty easily after COVID. Maybe not easy, but, you know, there are a few stalwarts, uh, places like Texas, too, uh, that did very well. Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be a great entry point into a lot of those markets because mm. they are dealing, especially these are markets that dealt with a lot of new supply growth. And like, you know, use Austin, Texas as an example. It's got a record amount of multifamily product being delivered in that market. And I think you can be able to buy assets more favorably later this year. So I think it will be a great buying opportunity. All right. Uh, a little dose of reality. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Yeah, unique take and uh, helpful for us. Keep our head on a swivel. Eyes from inside the private real estate world. Greg Freeman, Peachtree Group.